So here is the superior vena cava, which drains into the right atrium. From there, the blood goes through the tricuspid valve and enters the right ventricle. It then goes through the pulmonary semilunar valve to the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk bifurcates to form the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery. From here, the blood is going to deliver carbon dioxide, pick up oxygen, become oxygenated, and return to the heart. And it will return to the heart through the right and left pulmonary veins. The right and left pulmonary veins drain into the left atrium. From there, the blood travels through the mitral valve, otherwise known as the bicuspid valve, and enters into the left ventricle. The left ventricle contracts, which pushes the blood up through the aortic semilunar valve. Once blood goes through the, the aortic semilunar valve, it enters the aorta. We have different regions of the aorta. This is the ascending aorta. Then we have the aortic arch. After the aortic arch, we get the descending aorta. Now the descending aorta is going to go through the thoracic cavity. The portion of the descending aorta that goes through the thoracic cavity is called the thoracic aorta. Um, the thoracic aorta is going to go through the diaphragm. When it goes through the diaphragm, it is then going to become the abdominal aorta. The abdominal aorta has branches that are going to branch off to the kidneys, and these are the renal arteries. The abdominal aorta is going to bifurcate to form the right common iliac artery and the left common iliac artery. The common iliac arteries bifurcate to form the internal and external iliac arteries. So here is the left internal iliac artery, and this is the left external iliac artery. This is the right external iliac artery. The external iliac arteries are going to leave the abdominal pelvic cavity and travel into the femoral region or the thigh region to become the femoral arteries. So we have the left femoral artery and the right femoral artery. Uh, this is the popliteal artery. Then we have the anterior tibial artery and the posterior tibial artery. So we see the femoral artery and the femoral vein right here side by side. And we have the great saphenous vein, which is on the medial aspect of the leg. Once the femoral vein enters into the abdominal pelvic cavity, it is going to form the external iliac vein. And we're going to have the external iliac veins are going to merge with the internal iliac veins to form the right and left common iliac veins. And the right and left common iliac veins are going to merge together to form the inferior vena cava. And of course, we have the renal veins, which are going to merge together with the inferior vena cava to bring that deoxygenated blood from all portions of the lower body to the right atrium of the heart. And this is the right atrium of the heart. This is the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, and the first branch that we have coming off of the aortic arch is the brachiocephalic trunk. The brachiocephalic trunk is going to bifurcate to form the, the right common carotid artery, right common carotid artery, and the right subclavian artery. When we get to the region of the armpit known as the axillary region. So for about from about here to here, this is the axillary artery, the axillary artery. The axillary artery is going to descend and become the brachial artery. The brachial artery is going to bifurcate one direction headed toward the thumb side, which is the radial artery, and one on the pinky side, which is the ulnar artery. And then at the palm, we have the palmar arches. 
we also have a radial vein on the thumb side here and an ulnar vein on the pinky side. Then we have the median cubital vein. This is the brachial vein. And the brachial vein is going to turn into the axillary vein. So this is the axillary vein. On the distal portion here, this is the cephalic vein. And the axillary vein and cephalic vein are going to merge together. And at the point where this merges together, this is now going to be the subclavian vein. Next, the subclavian vein is going to merge together with the jugular vein to form the brachiocephalic vein. It's really short on this side, the brachiocephalic vein. On the left side, this is the left jugular vein, which will merge together with the left subclavian vein, which you just see a small portion of it here. It's cut, and those merge together to form the left brachiocephalic vein the left brachiocephalic vein. Now the right and left brachiocephalic veins are gonna to merge together to form the superior vena cava.